And now the news with Branch Tree. Good night, America. It's February 28th, 2013. It's after nine. I'm Branch Tree, and it's time for the after nine news. My co-anchor is stupid. Yeah, that's it. Here's Alan I Lie a Lot with this week's news summary. Alan? In tonight's news, the Pope resigns, sequestration looms, and more Americans are going to space. Branch? In our lead story, Pope Benedict XVI... 16, you idiot! Yeah, whatever. Re- uh, resigned eight hours ago. The reason for the resignation hasn't been made clear to the American public, but theories range over pressure from financial improprieties to rumors of the pontiff having a gay relationship with his secretary, Archbishop Andrew Geinschwein. He is a 56-year-old hunk of a man who recently graced the cover of the Italian version of Maxim magazine. The issue, oddly enough, did not have a centerfold. Here with an exclusive story on this is our Vatican correspondent, Kane Schmaltz. Kane, why did the Pope resign, really? Thanks, Branch. I'm here in Vatican City, and all anyone is talking about is David Beckham's debut with French soccer club Paris Saint-Germain. The former star of Manchester United and the England national team raised a lot of eyebrows when he signed with the evil French and has been vilified by the countrymen. But what a debut. The match opened with... Kane, 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 what what the hell is this? You're supposed to be reporting on the Pope. Oh, Branch, there is no Pope. The last one resigned eight hours ago, and now everyone here in the Vatican is just talking soccer. Kane, are you in a bar right now? Well, kinda. It's a wine bar, I guess. I couldn't find a decent pub around here, so I found this place, Vino e Calcio. It's a sports bar, so I feel almost right at home, Branch. Why me? Why, for the love of... Uh, Why won't Fox News call me back? I told them I'd do weekend anchor duties to ease into things, you know? And uh. Branch, it looks like Kane fell down. Yep. Now some Italians are pouring wine on his head. I don't know why. Well, let's just move on. Leaving there. Soccer. Crap. Kane can kick his way home. Anita, cancel his return ticket. I am not your secretary, Branch. I'm a meteorologist, damn it. Why don't you ever give me any respect? Jeez, somebody else, anybody else, remind me not to talk to that woman when the moon is full again. Alan, get me out of this. What's our next story? Thanks, Branch. The word for the day tomorrow is sequestration. That means that the government will have to reduce its borrowing by 15% across the board, which in turn means that there will be hundreds of thousands of government layoffs. While Republicans now say that the budget-cutting acts can only improve America by shrinking all of the federal government, those of us who live in the real world know that it will have the net effect of throttling our barely moving economy and causing great harm to the American middle class that drives it, leading us closer to the edge of financial calamity. The rich will benefit, as usual, and they'll do nothing but get richer. But the middle class and the working poor will, also as usual, bear the brunt of the cuts. Branch? Billionaire Dennis Tito announced plans to fly a married couple to Mars and back. Tito, in conjunction with a Paragon Space Development Corporation, will not ask NASA for any funds at all. He calls the whole expedition a philanthropic effort to be done for America. Well, since space travel to other planets will mean flying through areas of relatively high radiation, only older couples for whom children are no longer an option will be under consideration for the 17-month-long journey. Paragon hopes to avoid the possibility of these future cosmic travelers bringing back a newly born space mutant with incredible powers who will destroy freedom and force the Justice League to take action. According to Aquaman, the spokesman for the crime-fighting group of superheroes, the League has been in consultation with Paragon, and we are confident that Tito and his group will take all appropriate measures to prevent laser-eyed villains with levitation powers from destroying the Earth. We at the After Nine News know that abortion is wrong. America, even if it's not in America, and we trust 
that the Justice League and Paragon Corporation will do the right thing in case of any accidental space pregnancy and force the space-faring couple to carry that sweet fetus to term before they kill the evil child with tactical nuclear weapons. Alan? In North Korea, Kim Jong-un recently tested a nuclear device, increasing trade, trade sanctions on his beleaguered country. But somehow he always manages to have nice clothes and fancy hair. Why, you may ask? Because his new friends are coming to visit. Well, Alan, I, I don't think guys like him can have friends in the way that uh, you and I think of it. You're right. That's because Mr. Kim's friends are way more special than you will ever be. We're talking top-shelf talent. I don't know, Alan. I'm pretty special. So, uh, the guy's threatening to try and nuke Seattle, and you choose to cover his little friends? That's right. His new American friends. Uh, how could anyone from America call themselves a patriot after hanging out with such a turd? You're kind of right. I mean, for someone who claims to want to nuke America so bad, he sure does like a lot of things that we make. So who was this uh, American that, that went over there? Brace yourself, Branch. It's Dennis Rodman. Dennis Rodman? Well, he can just stay over there. Dennis Rodman, the guy with the green hair who'd put on a dress for his post-game press conference right after just utterly destroying any other team? Why, yes, Branch. That's the very one. He really was a formidable defenseman. And now he's yucking it up with Kim Jong-un. How nice. And now, according to Rodman, they're friends for life. Well, Alan, that's better than having friends with lice, I guess. But now we've got to break for a word from our sponsors. We'll be right back, America. Spring is coming, and there's never been a better time to pick up a new suit from Philip E. Franks. From now until April 1st, buy one and get 37 free. That's right. With the purchase of your suit, you'll get 37 extra items absolutely free. Your suit comes with three shirts, two ties, two additional pairs of pants, a Nokia flip phone, requires a new 10-year activation, Friendster account and subprime mortgage, an HDMI blender, and a free one-hour session of glamour shots. But wait, there's more. You'll also get a Filipino orphan, a case of store brand chili beans, one gallon of Dayquil, a copy of Hank Williams Jr.'s My Sister's a Whore, but at least she's not an illegal, a signed photo of the hamburger and the actual Hamburglar. But that's still not all. Your stylish new suit from Philip E. Franks also comes with a dreidel, a tire fire, wax lips, frozen tater tots, a mason jar full of corn liquor, travel boggle, two of the four horsemen of the apocalypse, and a Swiss army knife engraved with the top ten tweets of Nicki Minaj. As if that weren't enough, you'll also get Dexie's Midnight Runners, a puddle of brake fluid, anonymous dental records from 1971, this chihuahua with three extra toes, a personal voicemail from Randy Newman, a crack rock sampler, sea monkeys, your choice of crippling phobia, damp in the pants cologne for men, a deactivated cruise missile, a trial subscription to Squirrel Fancy Magazine, and leptospirosis. But you have to act fast. This offer is only good through April 1st, 2013. Buy one, get 37 free now at Philip E. Franks. Items may vary by location. Filipino orphan and chihuahua do not include food or other basic necessities for proper care. Philip E. Franks is not responsible for injury or insult suffered by Crock Rock, Corn Liquor, or Randy Newman. No returns or substitutions allowed. Amanda, when I look into your eyes, I see heaven. Frank, when I'm around you, I just melt into pools of butter. What can we do, Amanda? Our love is so strong. I don't know, Frank. What can we do? Hi, kids. I'm Jimmy Grimmin of Torchlight Technologies. Hi, Hi Jimmy. Jimmy. Kids, sometimes when we're in love, it can seem like nothing else in the world matters. That's right, Jimmy. These are the times when our real friends step up and hire the professionals at Torchlight Technologies. You see, kids, sometimes love just isn't meant to be. But you just don't see it if you're in it. You see? No, no, no not, not really, really Jimmy. Jimmy. 
<laughs> well, it'll all make sense in a few seconds, kids. You see, the professionals at Torchlight Technologies know just how to shed light on people so they can be seen properly. For instance, Frank, here's a picture of you taken a week ago at the local S&M bondage shop. I really like the way the springs look, but didn't that hurt? Oh, oh, don't answer that. I'm just kidding. <laughs> what? I, I don't understand. That's all right, Amanda. I've got something here to shed a little light on you. But that's not the only thing that got shed last night at the biker bar, was it, Amanda? Is that your best friend Mary there? And why can't we see her arm, Amanda? Oh, is that Mary's husband, Ito? Wow, he's pretty well built, Amanda. That must have hurt. Oh, no. Amanda, you said you went to Midnight Mass last night. Oh, Frank, here's a picture of Amanda and a couple of her friends taken right at midnight as the lights went up. Wow, they sure are massive. Maybe that's what she meant. <laughs> I'm so sorry, Frank. Amanda, don't be so sad. Here's a special picture of Frank taken with, my gosh, is that your little brother, Amanda? Here's another picture from another angle, and is that, it sure is another boy. Wow, Frank, you're one flexible guy. You son of a... Oh, don't thank me, Frank. Thank your friends from high school, and you might as well go ahead and thank Amanda's parents. Together, they raised the funds necessary to hire Torchlight Technologies. Another two lives saved. I'm so embarrassed. Is this on TV? Torchlight Technology shines the light on another relationship, and everybody wins. In the long run, of course. The next time your friends are in a relationship that you know isn't right, just call the professionals at Torchlight. We'll shine the light on them. And now it's time for Space Mission, Episode 1, Dialing for Fish. Hello, and welcome to tonight's thrill-packed episode of Space Mission. Oh, Captain Manly, the space mutants from Planet Zog are trying to eat our brains. Here they come now. Go away, strange fish varmints from Planet Zog, or I'll zap you with my space ray. Will Captain Manly destroy the evil space mutants from Zog, or will his conscience prevail? The answer later in Space Mission, Episode 2. Does this ever happen to you? Hey, Jim, want to go outside for a smoke? Oh, I can't, Greg. My ex-girlfriend is out there, and she's talking to my best friend. I bet they're seeing each other behind my back. Come on, Jim. Put on your big boy pants. No. If I go out there with you, I'd just look stupid. Or this? My boss keeps giving Gina all the good projects and giving all the crap ones to me. I hate my boss. I hate my job. <laughs> if this sounds familiar, then you may be suffering from butt hurt. If left untreated, butt hurt can lead to more serious conditions like bitterness, remorse, and dying alone. But now you can get rid of that butt hurt quickly and easily with Fellow's Butt Hurt Relief Ointment. Just apply it directly to the butt for up to 12 hours of relief for all varieties of butt hurt. From passive aggressive Facebook comments to arguments with friends, Fellow's Butt Hurt Relief Ointment has you covered. Why does my butt feel all warm? Jim, that warming sensation means the active ingredients in Fellow's Butt Hurt Relief Ointments are already going straight to the source of that butt hurt. Soon you'll be seeing things in a realistic manner again. Wow, you're right. Hey, Greg, wait up. I think I'll join you after all. Side effects of Fellow's Butt Hurt Relief Ointment may include rash, itching, dry mouth, anxiety, ADHD, and pancreatitis. Fellow's Butt Hurt Relief Ointment should not be used by children under two, no matter how badly they want that toy. You know, I guess Gina does have 10 years experience on me and an advanced degree. I'm sure if I stop coming in at noon every day and playing Cafe World until 5, my boss will start giving me better projects too. Gosh, this stuff really works. Wow, Jim, you did great out there with Andrea. You seem to be feeling a lot better. I am. In fact, she was so impressed, she asked me out to dinner this Friday. I might get my girl back, and I owe it all to Fellow's Butt Hurt Relief Ointment. Fellow's Butt Hurt? What? 
Is is that what that weird smell is? Oh, um, yeah. Yeah, I guess it is. Fellow's butthurt relief ointment, sold exclusively at Swellmart. And we're back. And now it's time for weather with our hot new weather chick, Anita Mejito. Anita, what's going on in the skies this week that's got my allergies all up in a tizzy? Thanks, Branch. Well, even though many in Houston are waiting for these cold nights to come to an end, it looks like we'll have at least another week of them before we can even hope for the arrival of spring. In fact, much of the South will be experiencing colder than normal temperatures to kick off the month of March. That is unpleasant news for Houstonians attending the annual livestock show and rodeo. Although I can't imagine it can get much more unpleasant than having to sit through an Alan Jackson concert with a lap full of beer-battered deep-fried margarine on a stick. Hey, I, I like Alan Jackson. Oh, not much of a surprise there, Branch. Well, you're not very nice, Anita. That man's a genius. Chattahoochee really spoke to me. Well, it's too bad you missed the show, then. What? When, what? Was it tonight? No! Oh, don't worry, Branch. There's always next year, and the year after that, and the year after that. Well, anyway. Well, well, what about my allergies? Talk about allergies. Branch, we don't normally do an allergy report. Well, mine are acting up today, so clearly it's newsworthy. Of course it is, Branch. Look, I don't have any information on the pollen counts right now. I do. I looked them up. Then would you care to enlighten us? Yeah, they're bad. Thanks for that detailed report, Branch. In other weather news, Texas is one of several southern states on a list of those most affected by global warming since 1970. Now, Nita, you know that's gibberish. Science is still out on global warming. Well, that science has documented proof of global cooling bringing colder winters to Texas, with average temperatures dropping at a rate of 0 0.2 degrees per year. Oh, now it's global cooling? How does that one work? If it's global warming, how is that making it colder? Nothing you tree huggers say makes any sense. Branch, it would take an hour for me to explain it to you in little words, and even then you wouldn't understand it. Well, I'll tell you what's real, Anita. Our sponsors are real, and they've got something to say. And we're going to let them do it. We'll be right back, America. Hey, how's it doing there? I'm Vinny, and I love soap. Nothing warms you up on a cold night or fills your belly when it's empty, like a huge bowl of hot Vietnamese soup. They call it pho. I love it, and you're going to love it, too. Everyone at Far King is there to help you create the perfect bowl of soup. From the Far King chefs and the Far King managers, right to the Far King busboys. Little Jimmy here loves his Far King soup, don't you, Jimmy? I sure do, Mr. Vinny. Yum, yum. I love Far King everything here. That's right. Far King Wednesdays is Far King Great. Great. That's right. One dollar off Far King Rice. Two dollars off Far King Hope. And three dollars off Far King What? Which is everything what we hadn't used during lunch. It's Far King for everyone. Come for Far King wait staff. Come for Far King hospitality. But most of all, come for the Far King soup. Far King. Far King is not responsible for people offended by a language, an implication, or an accusation. Not nuclear vessels, flying penguins, the Confederate Air Force, nor sticks and stones can be connected with Far King in any way. The Stravinsky sisters, Hubba Hubba, Lost, John Edwards, The Lord of the Flies, and Citizens United. Yeah, that was us. Avoid stupidity when making racial jokes. Hello, and welcome to A Night at the Pictures with Haggerty Doyle. I'm Seamus McCarty. The night in for Haggerty Doyle is he's laid up with the flame and whatnots. Although, between you and me, I suspect it's actually the brown bottle flu. Leave it to that son of a motherless goat to miss the very inaugural of his own show. Ah, but never you mind. Come on in and make yourself at home. Tonight's review is a little number called Les Miserables. Oh, this was an aptly named film, let me tell you. You want to know who the Miserables were? Me poor mother and me, that's who. After $38 worth of tickets and some $9 snow cops, 
Here I was thinking we were going to see a nice and innocent musical production that likes a showboat. But you know what we got? I'll tell you what we got. Whores. That's what we got. Whores and thieves and singing urchins. If I'd wanted to see that, I'd have hopped on a plane back home. So of course me poor mother starts crying and wailing about 20 minutes into the film because she's having flashbacks to childhood. And I'm trying to make out why Wolverine got caught stealing a bag of bread because he should have been simple what with his knife fingers and he could have even sliced the god for a thing when no one was looking. And the next thing I know, Borat is singing a tune with Helena Bonham Carter. Now how did that happen? That's when I had a blackout. I don't know if it was me whiskey, and I admit I was a bit languid by the end of the comet attractions, or the sheer terror of wondering if I was going to have to see him naked on the great big screen again. Twice now I've had to see that man's John Thomas about 30 feet high and with no fair warning. So when I finally came to, it was about an hour later, and the picture was still showing. It's two and a half hours long no respectable picture takes up more than 90 minutes of your life. People need to eat or perhaps use the loo. No, it seems this sod who calls himself a director is so full of himself he spends a whole extra hour foostering around with scrubbers and savages and a skinny blonde type playing an orphan half her age who never shuts or gob. So that's when I got disgusted. I leave the theater and find me poor mother outside in a desperate state trying to hail a taxi cab in Texas. You have to be a mindler to think you can hire a taxi cab in Texas. But that's the kind of foolishness what beset me old lady after trying to put up with the misery of their human condition while enjoying her box of sweeties. The poor thing snapped. And if it hadn't have been for all the terrible singing, I wouldn't have woken up just in time to save her from being picked up off the street and sold to a massage parlor. In conclusion, if you waste your time on this picture, you are either totally off your nut or some bird talked you into it. If it's the latter, I hope you at least get a bit of snogging out of it because you're wasting your time and your life savings otherwise. I'm Seamus McCarty on behalf of the lazy ass Hargity Doyle, and one or the other of us will see you again soon on a night at the pictures. Hey, honey, let's go to San Juigi's, that hot new restaurant. Oh, Bill, I'd love to, but it's such a bad neighborhood. Oh, honey, I'll protect you. I know you can protect me, baby, but I don't want you to hurt yourself protecting me. So let's just order out again, okay? <sighs> okay, Sandy, if you say so. Don't just sit back and let crime dictate your life. Ramco's revolutionary new product, the Whammer, will give you back the nightlife you so richly deserve. And what is this fantastic new discovery? Just let me demonstrate. Here's Bill and Sandy going out to the new hotspot without the Whammer. Here, Sandy, let me help you out of the car. Oof! Take her, take her, just leave me alone. <laughs> and now here's a demonstration of Bill and Sandy going out to the new hot spot with the whammer. Here, Sandy, let me help you out of the car. Thanks, Bill. You're such a gentleman. I love you. <laughs> I love you too, sweetie. Now let's go eat. But it looks like the whammer activated itself again. Should we wait for it to finish or just go in? Um, I think we should wait, I think, um, but just don't watch. Ooh, ow, stop hitting me. I swear I'll never rob anyone again. Ow, stop kicking me too. Ugh. Okay, he's finished now. Let's go in. He will wait outside for us, won't he? I don't know. I, I think so, but we really shouldn't argue if he doesn't want to. That's right, Bill. Nobody argues with the whammer. So what makes the whammer such an unstoppable crime deterrent? Money. That's right, money. We hire only the most vicious and sadistic ex-bikers, ex-soldiers, and ex-oasis guitarists that money can buy. And we pass the cost along to you, the consumer. But isn't the whammer expensive? Ha, it sure is, Sandy. But what cost is life? 
Since you are my life, Sandy, money's no object. So I got whammer. Boom. <laughs> That's the whammer, Bill. And now it's time for Space Mission, Episode 2, Ray's and Jacoby. Cadet Jacoby, don't shoot! I'm trying out our new Happy Ray. It makes mutants believe they're happy whether they are or not. Don't look now, Captain Manly, but those mutants look like they'd be happy in a fight about. Are the space mutants carrying instruments of doom? Or has our hero's Happy Ray done its job? Find out next time in the Challenge of Mra. Tonight on the Wild Network, don't miss an all-new Real Housewives of Toledo, Ohio. Drama unfolds at the Schlitzkowski house. They made the right kind of sausages, Brandy. Yes, they is. I'm telling you, I got them from Stanley's. That ain't them, Brandy. How many times do I got to tell you this? Did you use that coupon I gave you? Duke, I swear on the Blessed Virgin, them's the right kind of sausages. I can't even believe all this I'm getting from you. I'm going outside for a Doral. Destiny, listen to this now. Duke says Dems wasn't the right kind of sausages. I know, can you believe that? So I says to Duke, I says I got them from Stanley's. And it's neighbor against neighbor when the Popoviches and the Burpenhausers cross swords again. You know, I've been telling Sherry Lee that's Dougie Snowblower, and she stole it. And you know that thing is his pride and joy. I says to her, he spent two years getting that thing all souped up just like he likes it. But Sherry Lee just listens to everything that he tells her like it's the holy gospel. I mean, boy, oh boy, does she ever put him up on a pedestal. For the love of God, Destiny, it's not your damn snowblower. Now stop. You want some pop? I got brats in the cool and all, but you gotta come help me pickle. It's a brand new hour of the drama, malt liquor mimosas, scrunchy, and sweatpants you'll love. Don't miss The Real Housewives of Toledo, Ohio. Only on the Wild Network. So bad you'll ask your cable operator for a refund. Duke, just eat the damn sausages! I'm not going back to Stanley's! Madison, honey, don't play in that. It came from the refinery. Well... We here at the After 9 News like to do good for our community ever since we got the memo from our producer saying we had to. So tonight, our hot new weather chick, Anita Mojito, will be introducing a useless new segment called the After 9 News Pet of the Week. I don't even want to know how much we spent on that intro. Well then, Anita, what undoubtedly filthy animal are you featuring tonight? Thanks, Branch. Here with us in the studio is a very special guest, Snuffles. Snuffles is a three-year-old terrier mix who loves everyone she meets. Why is there a dog in the studio? I thought we were just putting up a picture or something. Get that dog out of here. (laughs) Oh, Branch, there's no need to be afraid of a little dog. She's just a little bitty puppy whoopy woo, aren't you, Snuffles? Look, Branch, she likes you. Anita, the feeling is not mutual. Get that thing away from me. Ah, sweet mother of mercy, she's putting her tongue on me. Begone, foul face-eating dog. Snuffles, are you giving the crazy man kisses? Those aren't kisses, they're germs. Guess it's been a while, hasn't it, Branch? This is not funny. My beautiful face is polluted by animal spit. Somebody bring out some Bactine or some like Lysol or whatever. Fine, Branch, I'll take the dog away from the desk. It's worth it to see you get hit in the face with a blast of Lysol. As I was saying... Snuffles is a sweet girl who's great with kids and adults alike, loves mashed potatoes, and is looking for her forever home. Filthy freeloader. That dog sounds like a damn hippie to me. Branch, the dog is not a hippie. It has no job, contributes nothing, loves everybody, comes around looking for handouts of mashed potatoes, licks strangers on the face, and you're telling me that dog isn't a hippie? You know how I feel about hippies. Now get that thing out of here before I... Before you what, Branch? Before you chase her off waving a gun like you did to that Girl Scout who was trying to sell you cookies? 
You thought she was a hippie too. She was 13. She was tall. And she had patches all over her with crazy symbols on them. And she came to my door wanting money for some kind of liberal girl empowerment program. And I was exercising my God-given Second Amendment right to defend my property with my licensed firearm. Oh, so I suppose you also think the evil government is going to turn on its citizens and you'll be there defending us all with an AK-47. You know, even if they are as evil as you believe they are, they have tanks, planes, drones, not to mention intelligence, which is more than I can say for you. Oh, listen to yourself, Anita. You're just another brainwashed, naive sheeple that wants to take away our right to self-defense. How many rounds of ammo do you own, Branch? Hundreds? Thousands? En enough to take out a moving target. Most targets are moving, you know, Anita. Alan wasn't a moving target when you accidentally shot him at the After 9 News Family Fun Fest. Anita, we will not be discussing this on air. What's the matter, Branch? Don't want anyone to know the truth about why you're not invited to NRA events anymore? Don't want people to know that during those two weeks Alan was out and you were claiming he was in jail? He was actually in the hospital recovering from multiple gunshot wounds you caused? I thought he was a bear! Alan looks nothing like a bear! Why did you have a gun at a picnic anyway? In case of bears! And the Constitution of the United States says I can take a gun to a picnic. It does not say that, Branch. Read it. Read it sometime when you're in your underground bunker. Or do you only understand what you read off a prompter? Oh, this is stupid. I need a Xanax. <laughs> Come on, kids. It's bath time. Aw, oh, Mom, Mom, we, we don't, don't want to. Kids, go get in the bathtub uh, right now or else there will be a spanking. Okay, okay Mom. Jeez. We hate baths. Hi, kids. Who are you? And why are you hovering over our bathtub? Yeah. Well, kids, I'm the dirt soap genie. And I'm here to make bath time fun. The dirt, dirt soap, soap genie. genie. Huh? huh? That's right, kids. Bath time hasn't been fun time in over a hundred years. Thanks to those corporate soap-making devils with all their clean white soap. I mean, you kids do like dirt, don't you? Yeah, yeah we, we love, love dirt. dirt. Well, then dirt soap is the soap for you. You see, kids, when you wash with ordinary clean soap, the soap bubbles up and washes the dirt away. Isn't that boring, kids? Boring! Well, dirt soap, on the other hand, adds dirt and soap to your bath water and to you as well. The result is that you have a lot of gritty friction as well as a bunch of that good soap action to get you kids extra gritty clean. Now you can go get filthy dirty and with just a quick rinse be ready for a full mom inspection. Yay! Bath, bath time. time! Thanks, Thanks dirt, dirt Soap Genie! Genie. No, thank you, kids. Now go get clean and dirty. <laughs> kids, you're making a lot of noise in there. You better be clean when you get out of that bath. Don't worry, so, Mom. We've, we've got, got dirt, dirt soap. Dirt soap. The fun soap for today's dirty kids. That was then and this is now. Here we have two dudes sitting in a bedroom in their parents' house somewhere in America. Freshly graduated from high school, these lads are pondering the very mysteries of life and the enigmatic trio of past, present, and future. Let's listen in. Hey, man, what are we going to do with our lives? I don't know, man. I'm pretty stoned. I could just sit here. Yeah, me too, man. Woo! Head rush. How sad. Hi, my name is Ben Curtis, and you may know me from such commercials as Dude, you're getting a Dell, or Another Stone Dude gets a Dell. Listen, people, don't make the mistake that these kids are making. Let's take a look at another group of kids and see how they're handling things. Hey, man, what do you want to do? I don't know, man. I'm pretty stoned. 
And there's so much to choose from. <laughs> yeah, that's the truth, brother man. Damn, I love life. Whoa. Now there's some kids with good attitude and some damn fine training, too. That first group of kids learned to get high with their big brother, the unemployed plumber or some such other. Well, the second group learned to get stoned at Stoner Valley Flight Training Academy. Stoner Valley has the highest quotient of trip masters recognized by High Times Magazine as expert flight instructors than any other dope users training school in the whole Gulf Coast region. The world-renowned expert trip masters at Stoner Valley Flight Training Academy use the very techniques used by trip master Baron Von Timothy O'Leary. Our students learn the very best way to use their buzz to its full extent. Sure, we have classes in bud identification and elimination, as well as trip administration, delivery, and ingestion. But every day is training day, and our students learn by tripping with our highly qualified staff of trip masters. And oh yeah, Stoner Valley is an accredited institution of higher learning, and it has the best 420 brownie you've ever munched out on, brah. But Dell, dude, what if I've got stinging, stingy-ass parents that won't pay my way through the accredited institution of my choice? I mean, they want me to go to some place called Harvard. Uh, no problemo, dude. I mean, I can't make any promises, but we've got some really actually pretty cool bank dudes that have hooked up a lot of our students and graduates. We could probably hook you up with a fat loan, man. Awesome. Tell me more about this place. You got it, dude. Now let's take a look at that first group again. Whoa, dude. A fly is just sitting on my nose and shit. Huh? And the second group... Woohoo! I love life and tractors. I love tractors too. Thanks, Stoner Valley. Thanks for showing us the way. No, thank you, dude. But thanks to Stoner Valley Training Academy, I can say, dude, you're going to get a buzz. And now it's time for Space Mission, Episode 3, The Challenge of Mra. On a nearby asteroid, Mra, the mighty space eagle, feels the effects of Captain Manley's happy ray and speeds to the source. Oh, I'm so happy, more happy, I must be more happy. Meanwhile, back in the Star Blazer. Oh no, Captain Manley is down. Whatever will become of us. Will Captain Manley survive this brutal attack? Or will the space mutants destroy the Earth? And what about Mra? Find out next time in Fresh Meat. Melvin, if you're going back out tonight, take a warm coat. They say it might get down into the 30s tonight. Fine, fine, Hattie. Who the hell is this mysterious day, anyway? I don't know, Melvin, but I heard it. Now take your coat. Meanwhile, in a top-secret underground bunker in Fort Wayne, Indiana. Okay, I'm officially calling this week's meeting of They to Order. It's just the three of us tonight. Victor's out disseminating information at his kids' recital. Which ones did we put out this week? Let's see. It might get down into the 30s tonight. Aardvarks have leprosy. If you stare directly at an eclipse, you'll go blind. And time heals all wounds. Oh, man, we trotted out that old cliche again? Come on, Karen, it's a classic. We put it in fancy script on a hazy picture of a butterfly and send it out all over Facebook. Social media really has done wonders for our mission. That's true. People love those motivational photos. So what are we working on this week, Scott? Well, spring is right around the corner, so we should probably do something with that. Speaking of spring, I heard someone say the other day that we said local honey is good for allergies. I don't remember that one. I'm pretty sure it wasn't us. That was definitely not us. Geez, I hate the imposter groups. Every time we try to tell people that eggs are good for them, one of them sends out a release saying that eggs are bad for you. Then we try to correct it, and they just do it again. It's confusing everyone and making us look bad. Are eggs good for you? Not so much, no. I thought they were. See? See what I mean? 
Oh, never mind. Look, da Daniel, write up a fax. Half of the videos on YouTube contain viruses. Scott, do we have actual data to back this up? No. Have we ever? Good point. I'll get this out to all of our outlets. Don't bother with Mrs. Gertner down the street. She's out of town and left her pager at home. All the retirement communities. The grandkids are never going to believe them anyway. Fox News? Oh, definitely. Done. You know, we haven't had the uh, conspiracy theorists in a couple of weeks. Who might be a shapeshifter or a government operative? Channing Tatum? Anderson Cooper? Taylor, Taylor Swift. Swift. Let's go with shapeshifter on that one. I'll make some phone calls and get going on Photoshop. Okay, sounds great. All good on the facts, Scott. Kids are already asking about it on Yeehaw Answers. Yeehaw Answers? Fantastic. That site's a gold mine for shady information. <coughs> That's right. When you need to know the facts, Yeehaw Answers is there with real responses to real questions from real 12-year-olds. I don't know how to take this birth control pill. Help me? OMG, stupid. Put it in your belly button. That's where babies grow. Duh. Five stars. Thank you. Sure, there are other websites out there that could answer your questions. But who wants to spend the time and money getting the master's degree you need to use Google, Snopes, or even Wikipedia? Now there's a faster, simpler, and easier solution where you can get the answers you want instead of the answers you need. We believe that the internet is a civilized place where users can be trusted to do the right thing. So we use the very same monitoring systems that helped our parent company win the Search Engine of the Millennium Award in 1995. Yeehaw Answers! Uh, uh, let's you ask those personal, embarrassing, and highly important questions in a forum where they'll be answered by kids with cute avatars. What could possibly go wrong? Um, um, I think I have a crush on my cousin. Uh, what could I do? You are, like, so sick. Um, like, this Taylor Swift song says all about it. Here's a link. It's the best song ever. Kill yourself, brah. Yeah, kill yourself, brah. Why you gotta rip me off like that, dude? I've got, like, 30 stars on this website, man. I'm epic. No, like, just this Taylor Swift song. Shut up, ho bag. Do I really have to vote on these people? They all have pictures that look like angry brat dolls. Yes, you do, baller so hard. One, three, nine, four, seven. Don't be an ingrate. You ask a question, and qualified experts took the time away from the mall to help you out on Yeehaw Answers. <coughs> when you need an instant response instead of carefully researched facts or basic human empathy, our community is there to help. Maybe you're an engineering student having a hard time choosing a place to finish your degree program. Um, University of College, beer pong, hello. Or you're struggling with family issues. I just can't seem to get along with my stepmom. We just don't seem to see eye to eye. Is cutting okay? Steal your car, dude. Or are you a wussy boy, Obama lover? Or you have a medical concern that you just don't want to take to qualified professionals. So I was just p trying to put my posters up and shot myself in the eyeball with a staple gun. Should I go to the hospital or should I just tweet about it? If you put a bunch of Robitussin in your eye, you'll be fine. Um, you should go to the cancer ward right now. That causes cancer. I got an email about it. I am so seriously. Go, like, right now. Um, duh. Kill yourself, ho bag. We all have questions, and when the fast response is more important than the right one, turn to Yeehaw Answers. And we're back, and just in time for sports with Happy Schrader. Happy it's that time of year again when we've got no football or baseball games to talk about. And so what, Branch? So bleepin' what? It happens every year, year in and year out. We call it late winter, you know. You ever hear a winter branch? <laughs> Happy you're a card. So what's up with sports? Is there any? Branch, as usual, you surprise yourself when you come up with the realizations that almost all stupid people come to. In this case, yeah, there's sports. We got the college hoops. Lots of people love that. And there's the NBA. 
But outside of Boston and L.A., nobody cares until the postseason, which is pretty far away. But on the other hand, there really isn't anything going on that's interesting. But I did see one thing on the wire that, that kind of caught my eye. Because of that sequestration business, they're going to quit having them military flyovers at ball games. Too much money. And yeah, I do get that. I never really understood why the government wanted to spend $5 million to fly a plane over a stadium when the only people that could really see it were watching it on TV. Well there, I've had my say. And that's all I want to talk about tonight, Branch. You pulled me out here again, even though I told you I got the goiter. And I'm going home to put my feet up and watch the TV. Stop calling me, Branch. I'm retired, you know. That means I get to stay home and not work. So stop calling me to come into work. Jeez. Well, thanks, Happy. As always, you're a joy to Go have in the studio. Go stick your head in the mud, Branch. <laughs> well, on a serious note, uh, we've got an editorial that we feel very strongly about here. Uh, here at the After 9 News, we know that every dollar spent on locally sourced, organically grown food is a dollar that cannot be spent on important research. That dollar could be spent on new enzymes and synthetic organs that could process the food the way that industrial agriculture provides. That dollar could help transform the primitive bee into a biomechanical masterpiece that only pollinates what we want, when we want. That dollar could lead to almost 100% recycled food stuff. So please, put down the heirloom tomatoes and help end the tyranny of nature. And that's all the time we've got for the news tonight, so good night, America.